You've heard of the Swiss Alps, the French Alps, and even the Himalayas. Now brace yourselves for the Australian Alps. Yeah, take a look at those mountains. What you're looking at are some of Australia's tallest mountains. Mount Kosciuszko holds the honour of being the tallest mountain in Australia, standing at a whopping 2,228 metres above sea level. Reaching the summit makes for a great day trip. The Australian Alps extend from the coast inland between New South Wales and Victoria. They make up the southern end of the Great Dividing Range, which runs along the entirety of the east coast of Australia. Though these mountains do not resemble the more well-known Alps, they do peak at a high enough elevation to have an amount of snow coverage each year. This is why they've been popped into the Alps category despite being a wee bit vertically challenged. Now my pictures are all from the snowy mountain side of the Alps because as of yet I haven't had a chance to explore the Alpine National Park in Victoria. I'll also only be delving into the large scale events that have created this mountain range. There are local events that have happened through time which resulted in very unique looks on both sides of these Alps. If you are interested in those, have a look at my sources for this video. Like all good mountain ranges, the formation of the Australian Alps has been long and complicated. The majority of the rocks in this area are deep marine sediments, granite, some basalts, metamorphic rocks, some limestone, sandstone and mudstone. These were deposited and lithified between the Ordovician to Carboniferous periods, with some older and younger exceptions. The Alps themselves were formed roughly during the late Cretaceous period when Zealandia rifted from Australia. The rifting process uplifted the east coast of Australia and created a plateau. Over time this plateau has been weathered and eroded, forming what we see today. This rifting style of formation is actually the reason why these Alps aren't as tall as others. There is no subduction zone underneath the crust to encourage any further uplift. It's very much a one and done deal and the height these mountains sit at now is probably as high as they've ever been and possibly ever will be. Their rounded appearance is in stark contrast to the other Alps and this is because there's just not enough ice present during the snow season to cause the kind of erosion that creates the sharp peaks and jagged mountain sides. There has been a degree of relatively recent glacial erosion, mostly around Mount Kosciuszko, but this has been fairly mild compared to other mountain ranges. Some of the granite has also been weathered into tours which create a kind of peak looking outcrop, but again, they're fairly mild, all things considered. Sure, the Australian Alps are not as fancy as some. You can climb them in a day and be back in time for a nice warm dinner. However, they are an incredibly beautiful sight to behold and contain one of the two alpine environments found in Australia. The rocks that can be found here have had an incredibly long existence and endured repeatedly changing environments. Therefore, there is a history and beauty here that can still be admired just like any other mountain range. <laughs>